Learn the most advanced recruiting techniques. Land the most desirable talent. Launch your company towards massive success. This is the Higher Power Radio Show with Rick Gerard. <laughs> Building your leaders into talent magnets. As an entrepreneur or business leader, it is crucial in, your, in this market to brand yourself and attract talented people. Ultimately, people choose you. You don't choose them. I'm Rick Gerard, and welcome to the Higher Power Radio Show. Our mission is to share insights from disruptive entrepreneurs and industry experts and provide proven tactical solutions to solve your company's toughest hiring challenges. So I'm going to start today. I started this last week. I'm going to start today with a quote. Keep away from people who try to belittle your ambition. Small people always do that, but the really great ones make you feel that you too can become great. You know who said that, Meredith? One of the housewives? Oh, close. <laughs> no? Mark Twain? Ooh, boom, right okay. on. See, that? that's all you need was two guesses. <laughs> Today our guest is Meredith Fish. She's the Global Director of Talent Management for Alteryx. Now, if you don't know who Alteryx is, um, you might want to get out of the house. They're um, probably one of the, they're the one of the most recent companies to go public here in Orange County. Correct. Mm -hmm. And one of the coolest companies, and we'll get into that a little bit later. So Meredith um, has a proven ability to build strong relationships and obtain organizational results. She is an approachable and effective leader that, who motivates her employees to maximize productivity, which means she cracks a whip effectively. <laughs> Um, her areas of expertise are talent acquisition, learning and development, and employee relations. And believe me, she's a phenomenal disruptor in the pursuit of excellence at AlterX. So thank you for being on the Higher Power Radio Show today. Thank you. I'm going to have you write my performance review next year. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I charge a lot for that. Though. Okay, we'll work on that. <laughs> All right, cool. So no pressure, but we're at 8433 downloads for the past 30 days. So um Hey, I'm hoping that this episode's going to wow everybody and push us over 10K. Well, no I, pressure, though. I, I hope so. I'll do uh, my best. All right, cool. So the format for our show, in case you guys are just tuning in, you haven't listened to us before, is we're going to identify a problem and then provide solutions. Uh, we keep it pretty simple. Today, we're going to cover uh, a little bit about your journey at Alteryx mm -hmm. when you joined. Um, and then we're going to talk about why it's important to brand yourself as a hiring manager or a person who is effectively trying to attack uh, attract talent mm -hmm. and uh and how to make yourself attractive to talented people no i don't mean looks wise i mean <laughs> people wanting to work for comb you. your hair <laughs> yeah i've got a serious problem with that one <laughs> <laughs> so let's talk a little bit about your journey uh tell us about how you landed at alteryx and and uh yeah. past few years you've been there a while right yeah so i started in late 2013 and yeah. i started as a consultant just going to help them out with hiring and really over time fell in love with the people, the product, just everything they had going on. Yeah. So I joined full time in 2015 as the talent management leader. All right. So when we first started, or when I first started, we had about 150 so associates. Now okay. we're close to 700. So, wow. so far this year, we've already hired 185 people. This year? This year. Impressive. Wow, okay. So um, what has been your you know, what, what were kind of the biggest hurdles you had to get over in the beginning? Yeah, it was tough. We only had about 30 to 40 people in the Irvine office, and that's where we were trying to grow our inside sales team. Yep. So really trying to get the word out there, do some direct sourcing. And when we would call people, they had no clue who Alteryx was or yeah. why they should join. They knew so little about us, and it seemed really risky to them. Yeah. Same thing in our Colorado office with development. And I would imagine here in Orange County, it's not as uh, open. People aren't as open-minded as they are in the Bay Area. Correct. They're really? not willing to quite jump ship yeah, as often. Yeah. <laughs> They're probably looking for the safe play as opposed to, uh, like, everybody in the Bay Area, sure, I'll, I'm open to hearing about something because I know they know if something doesn't work out, mm -hmm. there's 400 other startups out there that... To, to pick them up. Yeah, it was a lot tougher here, and especially with just no brand, no employment brand. Our leaders were somewhat engaged in the process, but yeah. more so like, okay, here, here's my recipe. I'd like you to cook up the perfect candidate for me. Got and it. apparently our candidate Easy Bake Oven was broken, so we <laughs> had to work on some other ways of attracting talent. Which is funny because I think most hiring managers think that we have a magic button that we push and candidates just pop out. Yeah. 
it's the rainbow unicorn butterfly kitten. You know, Whoa. we just we just pull that right out for them. You guys just took that to the nth level. <laughs> we try. The rainbow butterfly unicorn kitten. And we do. It's our mascot All in right. talent acquisition. He's on my <laughs> desk right now. <laughs> wow, you actually have one. Oh no, we do. We might have stolen my daughter's um, kitten and sewn wings and a unicorn on it. Don't tell her. All right, I won't say anything. But she's gonna find out if she listens to the show. Uh oh. <laughs> All right, so that segues us to um, branding, right? So you had a hard time getting people to jump ship, and I'm sure that uh, you were being unknown as a company, but also your leaders were pretty unknown. They were. They were very unknown. They didn't have much of a social media presence. We didn't have much of a presence. So we started doing little things, like owning our glass store page, responding to reviews. Glass store page is a very interesting thing. Yes. Yeah. Are we going to go there? Um, yeah, why not? Okay. I mean, we can. I mean, no, because I, I think that it's important that people understand that Glassdoor is like, to me, it's like the place that it's a hostage. It's a <laughs> hostage scenario. Like nobody writes. Very few people go on to write good reviews and right. just people who are angry people are. Right. I don't know. I just just take them for what they are, which is kind of somebody who got left who was mad. So I think of Glassdoor like my frenemy. Right. Okay, sure. You want to be friends with them and keep them close, show them love and attention, but also know that, you know, maybe it's not 100 yeah. percent accurate all the time and maybe not always in your best interest. But we really wanted to be able to highlight our culture, add photos, just add that employer content and yeah. respond to reviews. And we found that it did make a difference. We got more engagement, started getting the hiring managers engaged, which, you know, <laughs> baby steps, right? Yeah. Um, also LinkedIn. We made sure that we zhuzhed up our careers page. All we right. started getting our house in zhuzhed order. Zhuzhed up. I like that Do one. Do you like that word? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, we started. We're coining all kinds of phrases. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we really started getting our house in order um, on the employment brand okay. side. Yeah. And um, we tried mm -hmm. some other things. You know, we tried an open house. We had this old building off the, wasn't really that old, but compared to our amazing new building now, uh, we were off the five freeway, kind of a box building. We're like, let's do an open house. You know, our office is nice enough. Let's yeah. try this. Let's try to get some folks in here for sales. So I did it in the middle of the day or the middle of the afternoon. We, you know, <laughs> Had that work out. posted and prayed <laughs> and um, yeah, ginormous <laughs> flop. So luckily I have very trusting executives and hiring managers. Let, let me try it again in a different way. Got it. Uh, so we tried it in our Colorado office when we opened our brand new beautiful office in Broomfield, Colorado. And this time we did it more as a networking event. So we wanted to teach our hiring managers to really be good networkers. Yeah. And so we did a bunch of enablement before the event. We did a whole bunch of invite, in, invites and really made sure candidates were engaged in the process the entire way through after they RSVP'd mm -hmm. and really positioned it more as a networking event. Not you're going to come in and be interviewed for it's a job. It's kind of like the hackathons and stuff like that, yeah. which are kind of smoke screens for recruiting events, really. Yeah, this one, it was interesting because we didn't necessarily collect resumes. It was, I really just wanted the associates yeah. and the managers to learn how the heck to have a conversation with a candidate <laughs> some, in some cases. Most of them are very good. Yeah. But we got so much engagement. People were networking. And then at the end of the event, people were coming by and asking, how do I apply? Ah, how okay. do I become part of this? Nice. So we actually had six hires from our first event, which is pretty darn good that's really good yeah that's fantastic <laughs> I always said rather be lucky than good <laughs> <laughs> I think it was a little bit of both <laughs> yeah absolutely so uh, this is not a good segue at all but um, branding right so yeah. we're talking about branding your managers right so why is this important so it's so important we think about the way that we're branding our pages right and we yeah. talked about getting our social media house in order so when you think about yourself as a leader, something that we've been really approaching our leaders with is, yes, you can go out there and network and recruit talent, but are you a leader people want to work for? Yeah. And how are you showing the world that? And most don't. No. No. How are you showing the world that, Rick? <laughs> how am I showing the world that? You know what? I don't want anybody to work for me right now. <laughs> 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 no, I... I, I brandy myself as an industry expert, yep. which is why I have the radio show. And why, exactly. Yeah, so that, that's where I'm branding myself. 
Exactly. So, but nobody wants to work for me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to lie. <laughs> we'll talk about that later. I know, this is I know. something we'll have I to coach be on you on. I on the couch. <laughs> <laughs> so what we really wanted our leaders to understand, because this was a new concept for most of them. Yeah. You know, they were giving a giving talent acquisition or orders in their past positions in their past organizations. And they were coming into an organization where we truly act as partners and want them engaged in the entire process. And part of that is encouraging folks to want to work for you. Yeah. So we really, in some cases, had to have them look introspectively <laughs> at what their personal brand is. So that first approach was- Well, first they have to buy into the fact right. that you're a partner, right? Because ag yes. again, you mentioned orders and most recruiters and probably 80% of them <laughs> out there, if you're listening, are order takers. Yes. And that's that's not a good place to be. If you want to make your career harder, be an order taker. Absolutely. Yeah, and you're a business partner. You're a business partner, just like the HR business partners, right? Yeah. Who are dealing with strategic business level decisions. That's how we think of our talent acquisition team. We call them talent advisors, recruiters, lots of different names. But yeah. really, what we want them to do is to go in and help the manager be the best possible talent magnet they can be but also really Boom. understand the business. So understanding where their pain points are, where their gaps are, what their succession plan is, because if they don't have a good bench, they're not going anywhere in their career either. Oh yeah. And we can help them with that. Yeah, absolutely. So that buy-in, it takes some time, building credibility and trust. Oh yeah. Uh, but and it's not something that most hiring managers are used to. No. You know, just push your magic button, <laughs> spit me out some candidates, yes. and then set up the interviews. Absolutely. And even in the talent acquisition world internally, if you're hiring a new leader and they might be used to using an external partner, it's hard to get that internal credibility that, no, you don't have to go to this third party anymore. We're yeah. here to help you. Exactly. All right. So I'm going to cut a little bit earlier. We're going to take a quick break. Um, we're talking to Meredith Fish, who's the Global Director of Talent Management for Alteryx, which is an awesome company. Look it up during the break. It's www.alteryx, A-L-T-E-R-Y-X.com, like I'm giving you a plug. I love it. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and we're going to come back. We're going to actually talk about solutions to this problem. We'll be right back. All right. I want to dig into more. You're listening to Higher Power with Rick Gerard giving you access to recruiting techniques that will help you hire key talent to build your company towards real success. Rick is a recruiting executive and entrepreneur who's been successfully recruiting in the aggressive Silicon Valley technology landscape for the past two decades. After a very successful stint at Apogee, he founded Stride Search in 2012. Based on a lean efficiency model, Stride has uniquely positioned itself as a leader in retained search for the most critical talent hires within a small organization. Whether you're a startup executive or recruiting professional, by listening to Higher Power with Rick Gerard, you will walk away with skills to help you attract and hire great talent. Now back to Higher Power with Rick Gerard. Well, welcome back to the Higher Power Radio Show. I'm your host, Rick Gerard, and our guest today is Meredith Fish, the Global Director of Talent Management for Alteryx. Now, you know, we didn't say earlier what <laughs> Alteryx was. You want to give us a quick heads up? Sure. So besides being a fabulous employer, which I know, we already I made covered, our right? I feel really bad. Not that I'm even biased. <laughs> uh, but we are a data analytics platform. Okay. So we really take those rows and rows of Excel data, and you can build easy to drag and drop workflows to solve your analytics problems. So that's my... Even me? Yes, even you. So when I first started, oh. I know it's a soft topic, but I... I'm um, not the most technically advanced person in Excel, okay. but I went through our boot camp and I was able to take all of our sourcing metrics and build a workflow and do some analysis on where our top sources were. Little old me, building workflows. It was pretty amazing. <laughs> Little old you. <laughs> so, somehow I think you could do that much better job than I can. Uh, well, I think that should be the next show, new challenge. All right. So we just talked about why <laughs> it's important to brand yourself as hiring manager. So. Now, now let's talk a little bit about how to make yourself attractive. I mean, not looks wise, Well, <laughs> but you know, make yourself attractive to, to people interviewing for your organization. So let's start with kind of the mm -hmm. internal organizational structure. Or so, you know, what, what needs to be in that? So a couple of things. Would you guys do that? We, of course, the, the talent advisors, that partnership that we just talked about, right? Yeah. Having that support from your recruiting partner is really important. But then also a healthy dose of self-awareness. Self you know, are you somebody who's going to attract talent? What are people saying about you? What is your personal brand? 
And one of the things that we suggest for people to really kind of uncover that is write down five words that you think describe you as a leader. Then ask a couple of the folks who work for you to do the same, peers, colleagues. See if they match. See if they match. Is there alignment? What have you, what have you got? I mean, like, have they been shocked sometimes? Yes. Really? I think the biggest thing that I see when people come back from doing this is, Meredith, there's no alignment. Nothing matches. Or I see myself totally different than my employees see me. That's kind of like company values, too, in a way. Absolutely. Those go back down. Uh, Absolutely. Yeah. And your basic leadership principles. Yeah. You know, what's important to you? Yeah. What's important to us is customer emphasis, just really adoring our customers and doing the right thing for them. But creating a great culture, work hard, play hard. And if they don't embody that, the employees are going to feel pretty differently about oh, yeah. them than they might think God, they what are. do you do if it comes back micromanager, terrible person, we hate him? <laughs> I mean. <laughs> Luckily, because we hire so well, we yes. don't have much of that. But I, I think that the way that we look at things is a very holistic approach. Yeah. So let's say a talent advisor is coaching a manager and they come back and say, gosh, Meredith, they don't know what their talent brand is or it's way off from what they think it is. We'll sit down with them or their HR business partner and talk to them about what solutions are. Yeah. So really talent management, right? So okay. how are we going to help develop them to be a better leader? Got it. And then to attract better talent. Got so my thought would be if, if somebody doesn't really have the EQ necessary to be able to deal with that sort of thing, I mean, did you ha You must have had some loss, I, I would imagine, or some attrition on the management side at some point. Um, knock wood. You, nice. Okay, no. very good. <laughs> so good for you. We, we have very supportive executives who yeah. really feel strongly about associate and leadership development and hiring and recruiting unlike any organization I've ever been with, which yeah. is probably why I'm still there. Yeah. Uh, so if we see those misalignments, we work with them. And I think as talent advisors or recruiters, sometimes we forget that we're part of the overall HR organization and part of building an organization. So you have to kind of raise your hand and go to your business partner and say, I think we have a problem. Yeah. And what <clears throat> kind of coaching, what can we do to support this person? <clears throat> So is that an, in your organization, mm -hmm. is that more of an HR function? It's, uh, it's are, kind of everything. I know you guys are, are you guys split or are you kind of the we're, same thing? We're the same organization. Okay. So right now the structure is talent management sits under me. So recruiting yeah. and learning and leadership development. Yep. So we've recently talked, we're splitting that out, but talent acquisition is still part of HR. Got it. So any of the recruiters can come to learning and development or their HR business partner at any time and kind of raise a flag and say, you know, I think we have some coaching opportunities here. Okay, very cool. So they kind of bring awareness to the rest of the team. Absolutely. Fantastic. And hold the managers accountable. All right, so we had um, ownership of Glassdoor, LinkedIn, mm -hmm. and the open house thing. So that those were the organizational things you put in place. So we, we did one other kind of kooky thing. So Oh, kooky thing, I love it. <laughs> so we had, no budget, right? This yep. is, you know, back in 2015 and trying to think about how I can get some video content out there. Yep. So I talked to our CEO and Dean is so supportive of everything, which is awesome within reason, of course. <laughs> and <laughs> we decided to do a contest for the employees and the managers to get together and try to create like 90 minute or 90 minute. Can you imagine 90 second videos about what the culture is like at all tricks? Okay. And then there was a small reward for whoever got first place. And there was a whole voting panel and everything. Did you win? Uh, well, obviously. No. <laughs> <laughs> but it was such a cool way to get their managers to rally with their teams and teams working together to try to showcase our company. And the videos were hysterical. They were amazing. Uh, okay. Are they on your website? Can I still have, yeah. I still have two of them up on my LinkedIn so uh, they can check it out. All right. Very cool. <laughs> all right. So um, it seems to me like we just covered, you know, really starting by listening, mm -hmm. right? Making sure that the manager listens to his people, gets mm -hmm. feedback, Absolutely. has, has a, an emotional intelligence about who they are and what they are, right? Right. All right. So understanding that it's a joint effort, mm -hmm. it's a team. Um, communication mm -hmm. um, is super important. What, what's next? So that communication, that feedback loop, really understanding where they are and how they're perceived as a leader. Well, then they have to get the word out there. Yeah. How right? do they develop themselves? Right. So how do they not only continue to develop themselves and do all those coachings and trainings and all that, but 
how are they getting the message out there? Mm -hmm. Are they posting on LinkedIn? So often what I see managers do is when they have an opening, all of a sudden they'll just blast LinkedIn and Twitter, my opening, my opening, my opening. And so when candidates go to look at that, either then or down the line, that's the only content they're going to see. Yeah, so it's about me. It's all about them, yeah. right? So we're I have a need. Will you help me fill it, please? Absolutely. I'm pushing, it, pushing my order button. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to McDonald's. Exactly. <laughs> so what we're really working with leaders on is establishing that thought leadership year round. Yeah. Right. My son plays travel baseball. It's not just one season. It's all the time. Yeah. Always working on your skills and developing. Totally. Uh, he'll be so impressed that I got a baseball reference in, by the way. Uh, <laughs> Somebody just scored some mom points. Right? I think so. There you go. So they really need to think about how they're positioning themselves continuously. And it can be something simple, right? Team meeting. Taking so we're talking about developing a, a thought leader mentality. Right. Or even a brand, right? Their own personal brand and putting out on social me media. But you know what? I, I, would, I would think, though, that most people would shy away from the word, like, I don't want to be a brand. But being a thought leader kind of, you know, Absolutely. it feeds the ego a little bit more, right? Absolutely. And what Like Tom Cruise is a brand. <laughs> That's a terrible <laughs> reference. Yeah, but maybe it's not, not a Tom brand Cruise. I like. But housewives, no. <laughs> yeah, the housewives are a brand. But it, I want everybody to think about who we work with to think about the fact that well, I hope we all retire in the jobs we're in now and that we're so happy in them right yeah but the fact of the matter is you probably aren't going to no so you as a leader need to be constantly evolving yourself and as talent acquisition advisors really helping them to put messaging out there because when you're ready to make your next move too because it's always what's in it for me right yeah you need that long-term established brand not all of a sudden you know, posting a bunch of stuff on LinkedIn to try to look good. And, and there's nothing worse from my perspective than somebody who's been kind of let go and is desperate. And and what ends up happening is they're, they're forced to make decisions that they don't normally make for their career. Right. You know, so manage your career and make sure that you're you're really cultivating that. Absolutely. Holistic approach. Car Feedback. Yeah. You know, and it's all about that feedback, that posting things out there, attracting people, but then also helping your career along the way. All right, so here's what we have. Market yourself, mm -hmm. right? Focus on your career. Oh, one of the things I think we missed. Huh. Strong process. Yes. You know, have a really strong recruiting process. If you're a small company, you don't have the luxury of having a talent acquisition staff like you guys have. Um, develop a process that actually is structured. Oh, yeah, so important. And get that interview team together so they know what the heck they're interviewing for, yeah. what the job requirements are, and make sure you're not all asking the same questions. Right? Oh, my gosh. Biggest turnoff for Reaching candidates. Reaching the choir, girl. I, love I know. It. I know. <laughs> <laughs> That's something I uh, – nothing worse than candidate coming back to me and say that three people asked me the same question. Oh, my gosh. It's such a turnoff. It really is like a dagger in my heart. Yeah. It's like going on a date with somebody and them asking you, are you having a good time? Are you having a good time? <laughs> you having a good time? <laughs> Three times in a row, right? So no, funny, my I headphones fell off. <laughs> <laughs> I was the first time, but after the fifth time you asked me, uh, I'm <laughs> Not out. so much, no. All right. So structured, mm -hmm. um, timed. Um, timing yes. of an interview is very, very critical. I preach it on here a lot, but let somebody know what how much time and stick to the time as i'm getting the wrap-up time from our engineer Paul. <laughs> <laughs> but we're going to go over because that's what i do <laughs> well that time and also use the candidates time wisely right yeah. so this is a chance for every hiring manager every person involved in the uh, interview process to network not only are you doing part of your job as part of the interview team but you're building a connection yeah right that can you know, maybe serve you long term. Your paths may cross again, even if they aren't hired there. Every single impression you make from saying hi to somebody in the lobby, networking, doing these open houses, that's building your brand. Boom. Boom. And then as a talent acquisition professional, how do you help manage that for your people? <laughs> so what feed, do you do? Feedback. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we we really do have this true partnership. Oh, you're an accountability partner. Yes, we are. And yeah. they'll call us out on our BS too. Um, if we're not You can say bullshit here if you want. Oh, I like that. Yeah. Okay, good. Uh, <laughs> if we're not upholding our end of the bargain, yeah. you know, they'll let us know. Hey, you're not direct sourcing or you're not doing this. Okay, well, we really need you to sell candidates when they come in. Yeah. I think that's 
something a lot of folks struggle with is the fact that they think they're coming in and they have to prove themselves. Well, they're already employed and we beg them to come in and yeah. check out this job. So. Yeah, exactly. Nothing worse than making them feel like they, they're going through the Inquisition or oh something my gosh. like that, right? Yes. <laughs> like, why do you want to work here? I, I don't really like... Yeah. <laughs> you guys called me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't even know. I, I mean, I like that. I like the building. You have a really cool van. In yeah, here. You, your van dispenses beer. I thought that was neat. <laughs> <laughs> Saw your website. Everybody looks happy. <laughs> right. All right. Um, so I just cut you off, though. Okay. Anything else that you? No, just really every every single person you interact with helps develop that brand. And we are consistently giving feedback and, again, holding them accountable and making sure that we're helping guide them as best we can pointing them to content that they can use or I, tips and tricks on things to post and just really how to just be better leaders and then also how to showcase that that's there you go and that's how you manage your brand <laughs> <laughs> so start by marketing yourself focus on your career and build out a strong process boom one two three you do that guys you'll probably attract really strong talent I know that Meredith has, <laughs> I'm just saying. So you don't want her stealing your people? Uh, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I have big hiring numbers for the rest of the year, so we'll see. <laughs> yeah. So, All right, we're going to wrap up right now. Uh, we're just, out about, just about out of time for today's show. Um, Meredith, thanks for your time investment today. It was wonderful having you on the show. Thank you so much. Now, um, what would be the best way for people to find out about Alteryx and you and get in touch with you guys to... to um work for you. Absolutely. So you can go to www.altrix.com and A L T E R Y X. Very cool. And log on and you can even download a free trial, really check out our product. And then also on the drop down menu on the navigation bar, there's the careers tab. Also, you can feel free to contact careers at altrix.com. Okay. Or you can contact me on LinkedIn. Very cool. Or if you guys want, I'll give you um, her cell phone number. Which oh, is, perfect. No, just <laughs> <laughs> I'll have my 10-year-old screen my calls. It'll be fabulous. <laughs> you might get 10,000 people calling you. <laughs> so um, I want to thank our listening audience for tuning in to this week's episode of Higher Power. Thank you guys so much for the downloads and the support. Uh, quick thanks to our team, our engineer, Paul Roberts, our producers, Andrea Ballin, Shanti Ryle, and Kim Iverson. If you like the show, subscribe on iTunes and your various platforms. Rate, review the show. Um, tell me the good, bad, and the ugly if you want. I'm a big boy. I can handle it. Um, Just be really nice to me. I can't handle it. <laughs> 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 so you can check us out at Hire. That's H-I-R-E, Power, P-O-W-E-R, Radio.com. Or subscribe to us through iTunes, Stitcher, TuneIn, Spotify, YouTube, or LinkedIn, Facebook. <laughs> I got to cut down this message. <laughs> so I'm going to end this with a quote. I don't know if this might throw you off, but outstanding people are attracted to those who they inspire to elevate themselves to their greatest potential. Oh, I Do like that. Do you know that. who said that? Meredith Fish? It was Meredith Fish. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Tune in next week. <laughs> Our guest is going to be Brenda Dietrich, the Chief Human Resources Officer for the County of Orange. Oh, cool. Now, it seems to me like I know some of you are thinking County of Orange. It's going to be a really fascinating yeah. show because they're doing some really interesting stuff there. Yeah, very cool. I'm your host, Rick Gerard, and you have been listening to the Higher Power Radio Show. Hello. Thank you for listening to Higher Power with Rick Gerard on OC Talk Radio. the Premier Rewards Gold Card from American Express, the rewards points